In this video, we're going to take a look at how to control one ATEM switcher from another, all with the power of companion. So let's get into it. My plan here is to use the ATEM Mini I have in front of me to take full control of the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. So to set things up, I assume that you are somewhat familiar with companion. And if not, you can always check out the video in the description below, get it installed and then come on back. I have two ATEMs set up in front of me here. I have the ATEM Mini and the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. They are both connected to the same network and then I have Companion running on my PC, which is also on the same network. So over on Companion, I have the connections set up here. I have my ATEM Mini and I also have my ATEM SDI Pro ISO all connected in Companion. An important step here that I wanna make sure I can do is set the ATEM Mini and the Pro ISO up to cut bus only mode. You can do that in the ATEM setup utility here. I have the ATEM Mini set up on cut bus mode and then I also have my ATEM SDI Pro ISO set up on cut bus mode. Now you don't have to do that, but for the purposes of this video, it makes things a little bit easier to go through. Companion triggers. For all this to work, we're gonna use companion triggers to listen to the state of the ATEM Mini and then reflect that same state on the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. So when I press a button on the ATEM Mini here, I want that same button to be pressed on the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. But I want it to happen automatically and not do this every time. So now buckle yourself in for about 30 minutes of work as you set up all these triggers. It'll be totally worth it in the end, but it is a little bit of manual messing around in Companion. So let's start with the preview program set of buttons here. I want those to work first. Over on the Companion triggers section, I can add a new trigger and give this a name, maybe something like program input one. And from there, I wanna choose a variable to listen for. So for example, I want to look for the ATEM Mini and I wanna use this one here, label of input active on program bus of the ATEM Mini. I want that to be set equal to a value. And in my case, I want it to be the value of camera one. You can always double check these values here if you go into your ATEM software control, into the settings and on the input labels, you can see what the label of that input is. In my case, I have it set up as cam1. Down in the action sections here, I want to look for the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. So I'll type that in here, ATEM SDI Pro. And I wanna set the program input based on the uh, condition above. So if the condition is camera one, then I want it to be set to camera one. Hit save on that and we can give it a go. So now I'm back with my ATEMs and if I press camera one input on the ATEM Mini, you'll see that it updates on the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. Really cool. Back over in Companion, we want to clone this a few times for all of the other input buttons. So here, I'll want this to be program input number two. I want it to be set up for cam two and then camera number two on the other ATEM. We'll keep going through these for input number three. That should be set to cam three and also camera number three there. And then let's just finish things off with input number four, camera number four, and camera number four. Let's save that, take a look at the ATEMs. From here, I can jump between each of them and you can see here as I jump between them, the ATEM SDI Pro ISO is also updating really nicely. Transitions. One of the main catches at this point is to do transitions instead of a cut, maybe an auto transition. It can be pretty easy to get out of sync between the two ATEMs. In fact, let's take a look at that. So back over on the ATEM here, if I press around some buttons, you can see that it looks like things are working as expected, but not really, because I have auto transitions set up. However, whenever I jump between one, you can see that the ATEM SDI Pro ISO is not actually transitioning. It's just waiting for the transition to finish, and then it's cutting to that input. We can fix that by adding another trigger. And in this case, I will set it up as an auto transition and instead of the internal check variable, I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna do a quick browse for the word transition. And finding the right ATEM here. So I wanna listen for the ATEM minis transition and I wanna see if it's active slash running. I'll add that. So I can see I've added that on ME1 of the ATEM mini. And then in the action section, I wanna browse as well because I want to add an auto transition here for the other ATEM. So perform an auto transition. Let's hit add on that. 
said OK, and I'll hit Save. Now you can see back over on the items that if I hit one, it does an auto transition on the other. But you might have already saw the next issue. As we go through these auto transitions, things are getting out of sync. So I have four and four set up. And if I hit two, you can see that three was active for a second there. And that's because it can get very easy to get out of sync between these two ATEMs since the preview row has not been set up yet. And that can be done quite easily using the same system as before. Instead of program though, we want to set up preview. So I've went through and created all the rest of the preview inputs here for the main buttons. And if I head back to my overhead camera, you can see as I jump between them, things are looking nicely in sync, which is excellent. All the other buttons. From here, I think you have all the tools you need to create other buttons that you actually need in your production. You can use the Fairlight Audio Audio Mix option. I can add that to my trigger here and use it to keep the microphones in sync. So here I can say if microphone one is set to on on my ATEM Mini, which is the top one here, then I want to run an action which sets microphone one on on my other ATEM. And when I toggle on the microphone here on the ATEM Mini, it turns on on the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. You can set up all the transitions with transition style and selection, and you can even use fade to black as well. Check if it's active on one and then set it on the other. You'll notice of course that there are a few buttons missing and I think it's a huge benefit to have here since I want to hand this ATEM Mini over to a volunteer or someone like that. Give them a subset of controls to play with and they'll not be able to stop start the recording or the streaming, which is a wonderful fail safe. Typically we would use a stream deck maybe hooked up to companion to do this. However, I do find it helpful to give them an actual switcher device so they can learn what it's like to press that, use it, and then in the future they can actually use that device themselves. Another benefit of this whole setup is the placement of the main ATEM. It can be in a hardware box in the same room or in the same building as you're working and then have a smaller switcher right beside you to control it instead. So for example, my ATEM Mini here can be moved around with me. I only have two cables attached to it, but this other ATEM can have all the inputs and outputs, and I can set that on a table somewhere and not touch it again. Also, as David over on the Discord server has mentioned, it's a great way to control one ATEM Extreme with another, or use it to control an ME of another switcher. For example, I could use the ATEM Mini in front of me to control the second ME on my 2ME constellation behind me, Perfect for iMag or separate use cases, different streaming setups, who knows what you might use it for. So big thanks for watching and thanks to David for sharing the video on using it with an ATEM Mini Extreme. If you have any questions about this, if you've tried it, if it didn't work or if it did, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.